Hi Volcano and Asteroid class. I hope everyone is having a great break and has had lots of fun with their families and doing all sorts of things, winter activities, such as going to the snow perhaps. So, which I have also done. I went snowshoeing one day, which is very fun. And I'm excited to hear all about your stories of adventures that you've gone on or done just in Seattle with your families. Today, we're going to do a bit of a snow project and read a snow book, okay? So, before we start reading our book, we're going to collect our things we need to create a project. So, I want everyone to have one piece of paper, one piece of color paper if you have it. If you don't, that's okay. You don't need it. A glue stick, some scissors, and a pen or two. And once you got those collected, you're ready to rumble. The main things you need are scissors and paper, okay? Then we're going to read my favorite book from when I was a kid called Ollie Ski Trip. It's by the author Elsa, Elsa Beskow, and I really love all of her books, and I recommend them if you are interested in any good story that's a little longer than a normal children's book. These are really awesome and have great pictures. So this starts with Ollie on his birthday, I think. Ollie's ski trip. On Ollie's sixth birthday, his father gave him a pair of new skis. He hadn't had a pair of proper skis before, just a pair that the foreman's son, John, had made for him out of bits of plank, so you can imagine how much he wanted to try them out. But winter did not seem to want to come that year. Now and then, of course, it snowed a bit, but even before the ground was white and all over, the snow melted again. So Ollie watched and waited and longed for winter and wondered, will it ever come this year? But in the end, it did. A week or two before the holidays, Snow began to fall in big flakes, and it went on for two whole days and nights without stopping. Everything was covered with a thick white blanket. And when Ollie woke up on the third morning, the sky was shining blue and the snow sparkled like millions of stars. Ollie was so excited. He went head over heels three times in his bed without stopping, scrambled into his clothes, not caring if they went on the right way or not. And he ran to see his mother. Mom, mom, can I go out now? This minute? Listen, she said his mother. You must have some breakfast first. And don't forget your mittens because it's cold today. You guys know how important mittens are these days. We wear them all the time. Ollie gulped down his porridge and milk. His mother helped him into his thick coat and long mittens, stuffed him into stuffed a sandwich into both pockets and told him that he could stay out until dinner time. Then he waved goodbye to his mother and his little brother and fastened on his new skis. He skied over the thick white snow towards the forest. The trees were so pretty, and as he went deeper into the forest, they looked even more wonderful. It was like going into an enchanted palace. Ollie said to himself, Thank you. King Winter, I'm so glad you came. The next moment, he almost fell over backwards with surprise, for there in front of him stood an old man, glittering white from head to toe. Ollie stared at him. Are you King Winter, he asked? Oh no, said the old man. I'm only Jack Frost. What do you think of the forest today? Do you like it? Did you do it? asked Ollie. How did you make it all sparkle? It's easy, said Jack Frost, and he breathed onto Ollie's coat. His breathing hung like a white cloud, and then it disappeared. Ollie's coat was covered with glistening hoarfrost. When he laughed and gave Ollie's ear a little pinch. You're a sharp little lad, he said, and I don't think you would mind if the cold wind stung at your face a bit. You called out King Winter's name. A moment ago, so maybe you'd like to come with me to his palace here in the forest. Oh, yes, said Ollie excitedly. So off they went through the forest, Jack Frost and Ollie following. Ollie. 
All of a sudden, Ollie began to sneeze. His feet felt wet and the hoar frost on his coat had melted. Just then, a strange old woman came stumbling through the forest with a big black galoshes that squelched on every step. Galoshes are like big rain boots. She had a broom over her shoulder and an umbrella in one hand, and she was blowing her nose and sneezing all the time as if she had a terrible cold. Who is she? Ollie asked. He was... Ollie was just going to ask when Jack Frost rushed forward shouting, What? You again? Go away. At once. You don't dare stick your nose in here before spring. And then he blew a huge cloud at her, and she looked quite scared and ran away so fast that she dropped her broom. Ollie was surprised. He didn't know what to say. You are very rude to that old woman, he said in the end. Oh, so I was rude, was I? growled Jack Frost, still looking angry. Well, nothing makes me crosser than that woman thaw. Just look at the mess she's made here, he pointed at the nearest tree, where the frost had already begun to melt. And then he went around breathing on everything to make sure it was lovely as it had ever been. A good thing she didn't have time to do much more damage, he said. A little more cheerfully, you'll see, Mrs. Thaw is really winter's cleaning lady, and she's just as supposed to clear up before spring comes, but she's so silly, she never knows when she's meant to come, and she even turns up with her slush in the middle of winter and wrecks everything. You only have to turn your back, and there she is. Oh, well, Ollie, shall shall we go? Shall, oh, well, Ollie, shall I call her back? No, don't do that, said Ollie, horrified. She doesn't have to come back, does she? Oh, no, I've scared her away for a long time now, said Jack Frost, but you can never be quite sure with her. I'd make the most of the snow if I were you. I'd use my skis every day, but now we must hurry. It's not far to King Winter's Palace. Before long, they came to a huge castle. It was built of snow and guarded by two polar bears. The bears sniffed at Jack Frost like friendly dogs as he and Ollie walked through the gateway. Then they went across the courtyard and hung through an iron-studded door made of polished ice. They came into a huge room, and at the far end, two walruses stood beside the throne of ice. There sat King Winter, and his calm face looked stern for the first time. Ollie shivered and felt a little afraid. But Jack Frost led him up to the throne. This is a very nice boy, your majesty, he said. A little while ago, he was... Uh, a little while ago, he was so pleased that you have arrived that he was calling your name in the forest. Then King Winter smiled. His eyes gleamed. Gleamed like the northern lights. I'm glad to hear it, he said. You know how to ski, I suppose? Oh, yes, said Ollie. And toboggan? Yes, head first, and feet first, and sideways, too. And skate? I haven't got any skate, said Ollie. No reason why you shouldn't have some, said King Winter. But now that you're here, would you like to look around my palace? He nodded to Ollie, and Ollie bowed a very deep bow and followed Jack Frost into the next room. The walls and the high curved ceiling were made of hard-packed snow. A fire burned in the middle of the floor, and smoke went through the hole in the roof. Round the fire sat little people, working away happily. The men were making ski boots, and the women were knitting thick socks, and they were so busy they hardly had time to look up. Jack Frost didn't like the fire, so he hurried through the room quickly. In the next room, some girls were knitting ski mittens with long cuffs and embroidering them with red roses. They were very busy, too, but they did have time to look up at Ollie. And when they came into a room that looked like a big workshop, there were some boys who were building skis and toboggans and sledges. While in the one corner, others were making skate blades. They all worked so fast, Ollie watched and wished that he was as clever with his hands as they were. "'Why are you so busy?' Ollie asked one of the boys." Well, we've got to hurry now if we want to get it finished by the holidays, said the boy. You see, everyone wants their presents for the holiday, but we'll be going 
out to play soon. Just then, a gong sounded and the children screamed out, sweeping Ollie along with them. And what a time he had. Everyone wanted to play with Ollie. He joined in with everything. First, they skied down a slope with big dips in it. Then they taught Ollie to skate on the pond. Next, they built snowmen and a big snow castle that they all stormed, and soon there was a huge snowball fight with snowballs flying in and out in all directions. Does not look fun. They tied their toboggans together in a long line and slid down the slope. That's like a sled. Bumping over the dips, and all of a sudden there was a loud whistle and a flash, and in a flash the children had disappeared back into the palace, leaving Ollie standing by himself, panting and hot. Had a good time, asked Jack Frost, appearing suddenly. Oh, yes, said Ollie. That's good, said Jack Frost, with a pleased smile. Then he harnessed a reindeer and stepped onto Ollie's skis, and with Ollie holding on behind him, they drove off. Jack Frost knew a shortcut home across the moor where Ollie used to pick cloudberries in the summer. At the edge of the trees, Jack Frost said goodbye. Ollie arrived home so full of what had happened he could scarcely eat a thing. Would you believe it? On the holiday, Holly heard a knock at his window. He tried to look out but he couldn't see a thing because the glass was covered with the loveliest frost flowers, but he knew at once that Jack Frost had paid him a visit. He went out onto the porch, and there lay two parcels. One was for him, and it was a pair of magnificent, magnificent skates. The other was a toboggan for his little brother. That winter, Ollie used his skates and skis nearly every day because Miss Thought kept out of the way for longer than usual. Perhaps she was afraid of Jack Frost, or maybe it was because whenever it looked as though it were going to thaw, Ollie and his brother went outside and said, Mrs. Thaw, Mrs. Thaw, please don't sweep away our snow. Come again another day. Whichever it was, she didn't come again all winter. She didn't come until springtime, when King Winter and his court had moved up to the North Pole. Then she came with a splash. What a mess. Whatever Ollie said then didn't help. Not even when his little brother pleaded, Dear Mrs. Thaw, please go. Don't take away our snow. She didn't stop until there was a speck of snow left. Rain poured down in torrents and lasted years worth of withered leaves were sent whirling away with her broom, and everyone seemed to get a cold. Ollie was really angry with Mrs. Thaw. He was sad that his snow had gone away. But one lovely day, spring came, driving in her airy carriage, drawn by white butterflies. Then Ollie saw Mrs. Thaw as she stood by the side of the ditch, wearing a brand new apron. She curtsied to, curtsied to spring, beaming with delight. For the first time, Ollie really liked Mrs. Thaw and knew that she wasn't so bad after all. But he did wish she would learn to come at the proper time. Look at the, they're collecting flowers, and spring has come. The end. So that is a long book. I hope you guys could listen well. It was very fun. I love all of her books. They have great stories and pictures. But now we're going to learn. This is something most of you maybe already, we did it in school, but I want to do it again with you and maybe show your parents how to do it. So we're going to learn how to make especially good snowflakes, okay? So you're gonna start with a piece of paper like this, just printer paper, okay? And then, I'll just hold it up. And then you're gonna fold it in half. So it's like this. You're gonna fold it so it's like that, okay? And then you're gonna cut off the top of it. So you're gonna grab your scissors, be really careful. And then it's like this, and you're going to fold it in half again. Okay, so now you have something that looks like this. And if you want to leave it, oops, oops, if you want to leave it like this and cut it, you can. But if you want to fold it again, you can also do that, okay? Depending what your cutting level is, okay? 
So then I'm going to cut it, fold it into thirds. So it's going to look like this. You might need a parent's help. Or we've done it a lot at school, so maybe you want to, and you can show them. So it's going to look like this. And it's a little thick maybe for your scissors. If it's too thick, you can just fold it in half, okay? So you're going to fold it and cut the, the ears off, okay? And then you're going to cut along the, each side, okay? So you're going to want to make cuts off the top and the side, but never all the way through, okay? So I'm going to make a triangle on the top like that, okay? And then I'm going to do another cut like that. Triangles are easier than circles, but some of you have done, showed me that you can do circles, so you can try. You can do whatever design you want, freehanded, okay? Sometimes we draw them out for you. You can ask your parent to do that, or freehand and just be creative, because I know you guys all can do that too. So I'm just cutting little triangles out of my, like that, okay? Shouldn't take too long. Okay, so before you unfold it, it should look like this. You see how I have it cut all the way through? Just negative space, okay? So I'm going to unfold it. And the key about folding it, how I showed you, that makes it so it has a six-pointed star. And that's what a real snowflake has. So I have a snowflake like this. So I'm going to flatten it. And it looks like that. So beautiful. So you can just leave it like that if you want. Put it up onto your window. Have it shine. Maybe it will call snow so we can go out and play. But I'm going to glue it onto a piece of paper and then color it in, okay, to make some art. So I'm just taking out a glue stick and how much glue do we use? Just a little bit. I'm going to glue it down a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to color it in. And you can do any design you want. It's all about just being creative and doing some art. I really miss doing art with you guys. So hopefully we can do that again soon. And I hope you guys have been creative during your break and doing lots of fun art projects with your families and your siblings if you have them. So my, now my snowflake looks like this. And it's on a piece of paper. And now I'm just going to draw. And you guys can draw too. And that can be a free moment. You can add whatever designs you want. Maybe you can make a pattern if you want. So I'm going to put purple dots on every corner. And you can keep track of the pattern you're creating. So I've done that right now. And next I'm going to add pink. So I'm going to put pink in every elbow. Okay. So I have that pattern of dots right now. And maybe I'll add another pattern of blue and yellow. So I'm going to add... a blue triangle around everyone. So I added blue lines like that. And you can really do whatever you want. It's up to you and being creative with how, whatever feels like a fun thing to do. You can just do whatever. I like to hang them in my windows because I feel like it encourages snow to come because we all love snow. So I have a pattern going like this and you can do whatever you want but this is what I've chosen to do. I'm gonna add a little green and I hope you guys liked the book and I'm excited to see you all again soon. So I have decorated my snowflake so it looks like that and maybe you can go put it on your fridge or something and I'm going to remember to write my name, okay? So because we always write our name on our pieces of paper, right? So I'm going to write my name and if you need help, you can ask a parent or grandparent or whoever is watching you. 
So I've written my name, so I know it was me who did it. And it looks like that. And I hope you guys enjoyed Ollie's ski trip and going on an adventure with him. And I hope you all have a great another week of holiday. And I'll see you soon.